Okay, I'm live. I was waiting for the cue because I wanted to tell a very important story. You know what I posted today about all the judges and corruption and all? I, you, these guys didn't see it. But what's the important news? I'm on my motorcycle and I got gas at the stripes and some guy in the truck pulls up behind me and he says, hey boy, that oh hey, that's a nice Yamaha you got. I told him I paid $500 for that bike. And he's like, man, that is a good deal. Now I'll do a quick news update and if my brothers want to say hi, they can in a second. So you know I posted about the judges and the cops and the corruption. You see, what are you doing on your motorcycle then? It's, you're an easy target. Well, Judge Benyalis, of course, he runs people off the road and hits them. So I figure on the motorcycle I'll be safe because I can dodge. And then they had Judge Guy Williams for, you know, pulling guns on people in cars and road rage. But as far as I know, he doesn't threaten people on motorcycles. So I'm safe. Now, these guys are thinking, what's he talking about? That's a lot of the issues I've been talking about, the judges and courts and everything. So that's, guy, that's the news update, and I was just waiting because I wanted to tell that motorcycle story. Andy, what's the word? Well, uh, I, back to the corruption and stuff, I had heard a while back that uh, Nichols and Officer Little had went to jail, but you it know, was all I, just rumors. I was going to say, I, it was all just rumors. Somebody told me some stuff, and I tried to, when they asked me, I actually told them, look, I've not, you know, as far as I know, I, I, because people brought up certain things in the last few months. I said, as far as I know, I have not heard anything. I try to go by, I read all the news, local news, everybody watches. I, I look at the news. The facts. Yes, and I read all the news things. Uh, the news. So as far as I know, that's just the rumor. I do try to go by the news things. But anyway, uh, I'm glad I ran into you. As far as the uh, the word for the day, I heard a uh, chaplain, Brother Ray's yesterday, he gave a little message. And I told him that reminded me of what my friend used to do. Every time my friend would see me, she'd ask me, Hey, Andy, what's, uh, what's God been doing in your life lately? And it makes you examine yourself yeah. when you get a question like that. Yes. Because you think, ooh, well, what is he doing in my life? Well, well, I don't know. You know, he's nowhere in the picture. Well, that's not good. Yes. You know, he should be somewhere in there and he should have something on your heart, you yeah. know. Yeah, but that's, every that's man. kind of the word for the day. And there's a scripture you quote a lot. You know it if I mention it. Let every man be ready to give an answer. To every man that asks it. Yes. And so sometimes we're not in the mood to like, and I can Well, but I, I like that other scripture that says to be instant in season and out of season, doing the work of an evangelist. Amen. And, uh, That's right. Now, I, got, I got to be willing to answer up whether I'm in the mood or not. Correct. Yeah. You got to step up. Spread James, the you haven't, uh, I gave a good word uh, after I saw you yesterday sitting by the encouraging mm -hmm. that kid that like yeah. got in trouble. Then I ran into Jammer Caveman and I did a little video, but then I, I told the story. I said, you know, I just saw my friend James, which is this James. I said, and he was just sitting there kind of encouraging some kid that I guess gotten sent home early yeah, from, from his job. And yeah, man. That's so that was man, nice you know? to see that. And Man, don't ever let anything that anybody does in a negative manner towards you affect what you do in a positive manner. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can stop it with you. Yeah. It doesn't have to continue on because if it affects you, then you affect others with yes. it. It doesn't have to continue on behind us. Yeah. You know, along that same line, I always say don't let outside circumstances affect you internally. Because internally we have the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in that. So really, whatever happens externally is just temporal. You know, it's just for a time and a season. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a good talk with uh, Big Little Charlie a few days ago, and it was like a big teaching thing. I added a lot of verses. As a matter of fact, this morning I posted that. It's called Friends. I had Wild Bill talk. Charlie sang a song, and so it was a good thing. Mr. Albert Hoffman, do you have any updates for us? Yeah, I was talking about where has God died in your life, and I'm thinking, well... I'm fixing to be 62 years old. 62. I drink, I smoke, I do dope, 
but I'm still able to get up Don't and confess. bust my ass in the in the hot weather. You work hard. I work hard, and I'm able to do it. So let me I, ask you: Do you ever do you ever fly a sign? No. I <laughs> Albert, I've told him before. Oh, Albert yeah. says I won't fly a sign, which is I it am fan I, I, I don't even see 62. He gave us the yeah. to keep carrying on. Yeah. I just you did, know, yes. That sure. reminds me of the scripture that says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed out begging for bread. Yeah. You know, I've, uh, I come up here and eat, whether I have food or not, I come up for the fellowship and I eat yeah. sometimes. Yeah, that's but I think I've gotten, in the years that I've been here, at least 15, 20 years, I've I've gotten maybe one shower here, and I don't I don't go to uh, the Salvation Army to spend the night. I don't go to any of the the homes they have like that to go spend the night. Yeah. I uh, always find a place somewhere because God always provides. Yes. One way or another, He provides for me. Do you know? I remember, of course, I've talked about it before, but uh, Andy's brother, the older brother David who's a good friend of mine, and I do need to go see him. It's been a few weeks, but a few years back, uh, I helped David and David Martin start in a nice little halfway house, and it was open for you know a year and a half or whatever, but Andy was the like house manager, and I'd go over there and do Bible studies, and even though we, don't, we called it New Way, but even though it was there for you know maybe a year and a half or whatever, it was good. It was really good, and I remember I'd go over there. Remember, you do remember New yeah, Way. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and it served its purpose. You know, it helped out a lot yeah. of people. Yes. Um, the Lord did a lot of things that we don't even really know that He did yeah. in the process of doing it. Yeah. A lot of people remember that place that came and went, yeah. and uh, that came and stayed. And, uh, it was a uh, humbling experience for me. Yeah. And you were, you know, Andy was even working at the Good Recovery Center, which I've mentioned before, it's called Charlie's Place. He was like a tech, what was it word? I was a substance abuse technician. Okay. And uh, I would give UAs to people, and I would direct them in the right direction to go when they get off track with the rules and regulations, I'd give them an option. Number one, they could uh, comply with the rules and regulations and everything would work out wonderfully. Number two, if they could continue to disregard the rules and regulations, they would be wrote, well, they would be wrote up anyway for disregarding them the first time. Uh, still, if they continue, what could happen was they could be put out on the street. And as far as their sobriety or their uh, staying clean, you know, it would be up to them then because yeah. they'd be out on the street and they'd have no safe environment, drug-free yeah. environment. Yeah. It so was, they had a choice. I've taken a lot of uh, my friends over the years, just dropped, taking them up. They'd come up here and ask me, I, I, can you take me to Charlie's? I said, I can't. And you know, oftentimes there's a waiting list and you know, just about every time I've taken my friends, like in a spur of the moment, they were able to go in as a walk-in which simply meant they happened to have a bed, they have, and so that was always a blessing. And I, of course, people support Charlie's Place. It's one of the premier recovery centers. And I see it as a tool, you know, uh, to be able to just give the ride, you know. And I had a few brothers over the years. James, you're familiar with Charlie's Place somewhat? I am, I am. I, I haven't ever attended there. Uh, but from what I understand, it is a very good, it's, it's a, a nurturing program it's like really just get your mind off the drugs and your old habits and your old ways yeah. and, and start focusing on something new yeah. I mean some people need Charlie's Place others you know God puts it right on into our hearts and be like alright man it's time to walk the walk brother correct it's there's different aspects of uh, recovery and from addiction um, okay look I'm gonna end it because I might wind up talking uh, I haven't seen Furman. He was parked by my little spot, and maybe this afternoon I might run into him, and then, you know, I'll g he'll give a little update. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, God bless everybody, and that's number one for today.